Governor Ron DeSantis, how are you, sir? I'm wonderful, Mark. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. I wanted to discuss a few things with you. Um, Disney's one of them. Well, what do you make of more liberal Republicans? We're now seemingly taking the side of Disney against the people in the state of Florida. Do you find that a bit bizarre? I do. I mean, first of all, Disney has gone in a direction in terms of their corporate ethos uh, to embrace the sexualization of children. I mean, you've seen it in what they did in Florida last year to try to tank our parents' rights and education bill, which basically says, you know, we're not going to be doing gender ideology in, in, in second and third grade. Uh, but you also see it in some of the programming decisions they've made and other things that their executives have said over the last year or two. And so that is just, I think, a company that's lost its way. And I've been very honest about my views on that. And it's a lot different than the Disney that I grew up with here in Florida. Uh, but when you start talking about this dispute about whether they should have their own government, corporate welfare, massive tax breaks. If you're siding with Disney, you are a corporatist. You're not supporting free enterprise. Uh, You believe that the state of Florida owes this one company to put them on a pedestal let them be exempt from laws that everyone else has to follow, let them accrue all these special benefits, and somehow that is what a free market is all about. You and I, Mark, both know that is not the case. Uh, They had a deal that was really indefensible. And so what we've said and done is say, you know what? Disney's not going to have its own government. Uh, They're going to live under the same laws as everybody else. They're going to pay their fair share of taxes, and they're going to pay off the municipal debt that they racked up. And that's what the people of Florida want to see. And I think a lot of these guys who are popping off, I don't think they know what they're talking about. But to the extent that they want to side with a California-based company with close ties to the CCP who's indulged in this kind of activity with respect to children, that's on them. That's not on me. Very well put. And, you know, it also tells me that they don't have the guts to take on the uh, culture wars. Um, you're fighting them. You're taking them on. You know the media are going to attack you. You know that the the left flank of the Republican Party is going to attack you. The Democrats are going to attack you because they're used to rolling over on these culture wars. I don't see that the former governor of New Jersey fought the culture wars. I don't see the current governor of New Hampshire doing a damn thing about it. I don't see the former governor of Arkansas having done anything, let alone fight the culture wars. And yet if we just surrender to the culture war, we're going to lose our country, are we not? You also have this situation where corporate America is now driving a lot of this stuff. And some of it is is woke ideology. Some of it is this idea of ESG, environment, social governance, which really is a facade for them to advance a left-wing agenda through the business sector and through corporate America. And I think the question is, is okay, those policies threaten our freedom. Uh, those policies threaten our way of life. Uh, are we going to be active in defending our people against those threats? Or are we going to say, like many Republicans have over the years, you know, we just defer to corporations, you know, let the corporations uh, do what they want, even if they're indulging in things that are destructive for our society. Uh, We actually passed legislation, and I signed it uh, last week, kneecapping ESG in the state of Florida. So some of that means like our pension funds, uh, we're not allowing ESG criteria to be used for our state's pension, which is, you know, $180 billion. Uh, But it also gets into protecting people from woke banking, making sure ratings agencies aren't doing all this. Mark, what they're trying to do is they're trying to change policy and they're trying to change society without having to go through the normal constitutional process. So when we're standing up to these big entities, we're basically saying no social or economic transformation without representation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's going on after midnight tonight with this Title 42. I can't think of another country on the face of the earth that would do this to itself, that would have a completely open border where we're going to have millions of more people coming into the country. We don't know who they are. It's impossible to vet them. Has the White House, has the Department of Homeland Security, have any of these people contacted you, Governor, to coordinate with you what they're doing at all? 
No, I mean, in fact, um, they would, um, you know, when Biden first became president, we would see them bring in the middle of the night flights into Jacksonville without telling anybody. Now, we we expose this, so they stopped doing it. And then the fact that I am armed with uh, money from our Florida legislature to transport illegal aliens to sanctuary jurisdictions like we did with Martha's Vineyard, Biden has been loath to dump people in Florida. So I think our policies have actually been effective at, at deterring this. You know, the problem is, is people can still trickle in. I just signed an anti-illegal immigration bill that's increasing penalties for smuggling illegals into the state of Florida. We also have mandatory E-Verify, removing some of the carrots for people to want to come at least to our state illegally. We need to do that nationally. But what you have is you have massive numbers of people, which in and of itself, Mark, puts huge burdens on communities on health care, education, the criminal justice system. Of course, you've got criminal aliens that are coming across the border. You've got people that are on our own Biden administration terror watch list that are coming across the border. And, of course, we've seen unconscionable amounts of fentanyl such that we have tens of thousands of Americans overdosing and dying from fentanyl every year now. Um I think that the president of the United States is uh, defaulting on his obligation to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. He's defaulting on his obligation to defend the security uh, of the United States of America. And if we were a serious country, uh, he would have been run out of office over this. I mean, this is a massive, massive breach of the duty that he owes us uh, as Americans uh, to keep us safe. So um, I think it's going to be a total disaster. I think you have a lot of illegals waiting in Mexico for this to drop. And as soon as it does, I think you're going to see a massive stampede. You are absolutely going to see a lot of deaths at the border as a result of this. And, you know, it's like we obviously look and see if a criminal alien comes and victimizes an American. We're upset about that. And I am. And I had an, I had an angel mom uh, at our at our immigration bill signing yesterday. Uh, but, you know, some of these migrants are being trafficked. Uh, some of them are victims, too. The cartels are moving mm-hmm. people through. People are being sexually abused. It is a total catastrophe. I just wish the media would pay attention to it. The only thing I've seen the media really get upset about is when we sent 50 to Martha's Vineyard. They got really upset about that because it was almost like the reality was piercing their little liberal bubble. But they don't seem to care about what's happening to the border towns in Texas. They don't seem to care about what's happening in other communities in the United States. Um, And I think it's just a total travesty. Governor DeSantis, is it me or does it seem like on every single issue, Biden takes exactly the wrong position? I mean, how is that possible? I think, well, I mean, Mark, I mean, come on, this guy's not playing with a full deck of cards. Uh, he's incredibly low energy. I mean, you, you've read The Federalist. Uh, Alexander Hamilton uh, wrote, uh, energy in the executive is the leading characteristic of good government. And this is somebody who is uh, completely opposite. Uh, yeah, but uh, they're doing a lot. He, maybe not him. They're doing a lot. It's just bad. With the executive orders and so well, forth. it's through, but it, but it's through. Yeah, no, that that's true. But that's, I think, that's a whole other issue with the administrative state and kind of what they're doing. But you know, the Biden, this is his responsibility for the border, and he's basically out to lunch. Look, it's intentional. His staff and the ideologues in the White House, they believe in open borders. They're globalist. They think we're all citizens of the world. They don't think that we have the right to determine who comes into this country. They think foreigners have a right uh, to come in. Uh, But I think that Biden, if he was a little bit more involved and assertive, uh, because this reflects very poorly on him, you would think that this would be something that he wouldn't want to see on his watch. Now, every other thing that they're doing, I mean, they just did the rule with E. First of all, Mark, you know better than anyone. They don't have authority to be issuing these edicts through the bureaucracy, no. like what they're trying to do with energy regulation, like what they're trying to do with home lending, all this stuff. And it just raises the question about, you know, do we govern ourselves 
uh, or do we just have this Leviathan that churns out policy that oftentimes is restricting our freedoms? Biden obviously agrees with a lot of this policy, so he wouldn't necessarily be one to even want to stop it. But, you know, even when we have Republicans in, you know, you have a bureaucracy that's very harmful uh, to human liberty. And uh, I think it's just gone on steroids under Biden. And if, you know, we allow this to happen, you know, past 24 and whatnot, um, you know, you're going to end up in a situation where these elections are basically just suggestions. But ultimately, you know, the permanent administrative state just just continues to do what it wants. Well, I know you need to go. You're welcome here anytime. We're big fans here of Ron DeSantis. I call you America's governor because you are. And my best to your wife and your family. Mark, thanks so much. Appreciate all you're doing. And we look forward to running Indy in the Sunshine State soon. He's a good man. Very, very good man.